Hey guys, welcome to the Master Drum Whiskey Room. How you doing? How we doing, everybody? Forgive it's a it's a new setup. I want to uh, make sure that everything's hey working guys. here. Um, can you guys uh, hear me okay? I have a new uh, mic set up and a new camera. I just want to make sure everything looks good and sounds good. Let me know in the chat, guys. In the meantime, uh, I want to say hi to New Menium. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Jason Coates, yes, my doppelganger. <laughs> Scott, how you doing, buddy? Um, from my bourbon journey, how you doing, man? And Dan Trout, my uh, everyone's doing good. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Uh, we have a great show tonight. Uh, hopefully, you guys can hear me. Um, let me check the sound here. Yes, my doppelganger. <laughs> All right, I got sound. Cool. All right, so um, I guess before we get started. Um, before we get started, guys, I just want to send thoughts and prayers out to anyone dealing with the hurricane down south. If you're in Florida or made your way out of Florida and you're getting out of another state, you know, I know Hurricane Michael's kind of coming towards you. So I hope uh, I hope everyone is doing OK and, um, you know, staying safe. So. All right, cool. So let's see who else we got in here. Sipper Social Club. How you doing, Jeremy? Thanks for coming in, man. Um, Eric, uh, I just finished a live show and promote. Oh, thanks so much, Eric. I really appreciate that. Thanks, man. Sipper Social Club. That's uh, Jeremy who provided this uh, this amazing. Oh, where is it? Here it is. My Booker's Rye uh, sample, which I won on uh, Rob at Whiskey in the Six. One on his show, and Jeremy was kind enough to send a, a very generous one out sample. Can't thank you enough, man. It's because of you this show's happening. So if you haven't checked out Jeremy's show, go go check out Sipper Social Club on YouTube. He does an amazing job with uh, um, reviewing scotches. He's you know he does pretty quick reviews and gives you a lot of information. It's awesome. So go check him out. All right, uh, let's see what's up, Mister Fan Fantasy Pants. <laughs> Graham Young, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you in here. Jim Shannon, sounds better. Good. Yeah, I, I figured the. Uh, the microphone would help a bit. Um, Welsh Toro's in here. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Richie Z, how you doing? Um, and Bird Dog. Bird Dog's on the East Coast, so all is good. Yeah, I was thinking about you, Bird Dog. I knew you were in Florida, so glad you're doing okay. Uh, Jeremy, no, I haven't cracked it yet. I was saving it for the show, and I was like dying to get into this a little bit. So uh, it should be fun. So before we get started, uh, I'm going to get my palate ready for some rye. So if you guys want to join in, drink some rye. I am starting with one of my favorite ryes ever, which is the old Rittenhouse rye, Bottled and Bond. I love this stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with this before we get into the bookers and uh, get my palate ready here. So what's everyone sipping on tonight? Nice. Jeremy, I figured you'd try a wee pour before the show. <laughs> well, I wanted to save it because uh, I want to put it up against the Knob Creek. Uh, I'm going to put it head to, get, head to head against this guy. and um, Plus, I want to put a little water in it and see how that reacts. So I just wanted to make sure I had enough to do all that because I, I had a feeling if I started uh, drinking the Booker's Rye, I might not stop. So, <laughs> Yeah, Jeremy's reviews are great. Uh, let's see. Jeff... Jeff Knapp's here in for Ryan McGinnon. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's going to be fun. Um, New Manium is drinking Joseph Magnus. Nice. Very cool. Uh, just poured a sample of the New Rift bourbon. Oh, Josh, you got the you got the bourbon. And the Joshua, last week he won our uh, T-shirt, and he also won a sample of the New Rift. Hope, you're, hope you enjoy it, buddy. Let me know how you like it. Um, Graham Young had Lot 40 cast strength rye. Uh, so jealous, man. Uh, let's see, Dan, Russell's Reserve store pick. He likes that stuff. Um, sipping on some Border Bourbon from 4th Parallel Distillery out of Wisconsin. Nice, Scott. All right, so before we get started here with this one, just want to say cheers. Thanks for joining us. And here's to the first dram of the night, guys. Here we go. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Cheers. Mmm. Man. I love Rittenhouse rye. It's, it's such it's such a bargain. Twenty five bucks. 
I mean, I get such a, so many baking spices out of this. Even um, somebody told me to look for a roasted marshmallow when I try this. And, uh, you know, the first time I had it, you know, way back when. And if he didn't say it, I probably wouldn't have found it. But now that's kind of like ingrained in my head. So I get like a roasted marshmallow out of this. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, on the nose, it's uh, so many good basing spices. It's great stuff. Eric Wade, he is drinking the McAllen Classic Cut. He may finish the bottle by the end of the week. Eric, I had a uh, I had a dram of that uh, at a bar, and it was delicious. It's probably one of the, definitely one of the McAllens I have to find and spend some money on. It's good stuff. Uh, Jeremy, I'm at work, so everyone pour a little more for me tonight. Will do, Jeremy. I'll definitely be thinking about you uh, while sipping on that Booker's. Um, yeah, great pour, nice to sip on, and for cocktails. Yeah. The Rittenhouse Rye is so diverse. You could use it in anything. It's great in a in a cocktail. Especially, uh, I love using Rittenhouse in an old fashioned. It's good stuff. So, guys, um, Eric, wait. I get a hint of Schnozberry on the Booker's Rye. <laughs> Who've had a head of a Schnozberry? This must be those crazy vermicious canits in your head. That was just on the other night. It's funny you brought that up. I was watching that. <laughs> Willy Wonka. So, um, another quick announcement, guys. Tonight, um, for you guys hanging out, we have a really cool contest. I had this, uh, this uh, game we're going to play called Guess the Bottle. I'm going to show you guys a silhouette of, a, uh, of one bourbon bottle and one scotch bottle. And whoever can guess the bottle just based on the silhouette of the shape of the bottle will win a one ounce pour of this stuff. Uh, I just reviewed it. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, I already have the uh, the sample bottles all set, so we're gonna we're gonna play that a little bit later. It's gonna be awesome. So um here we go have you tried murray hill club gotta love willy wonka yeah well Toro, i've killed a load of my bourbon recently i only have a few left and no rye at all <laughs> oh yeah i got you welsh all right Dan, Dan. okay so so as usual guys before we get into the bookers and stuff and the uh, fun and games um let's get into a little bit of whiskey news um so just, just an interesting story I found about the American craft distilling uh, industry and just how crazy and on fire it is. So it had some really interesting stats that I, that I, had, uh, that I found. Um, so the 2018 Craft Spirits Data Project at the third annual Craft Spirits Economic Briefing, what did they learn? Uh, they learned that the American craft distillery sold 7.2 million cases in 2017 and that went up 24% already from 2016. That accounts for 3.7 billion in sales. The number of active distillers in the US grew by 15.5% last year. So we have 1,835 craft distilleries in the US total, which is a huge chunk. A lot of it is centered around California, New York, Washington, Texas, and Colorado. California alone is home to 156 distilleries New York has 134, Washington 122, Texas has 108, and Colorado has 99 craft distilleries. So uh, what does it mean for us? Probably a lot of lot more higher quality and some really uh, cool experimental whiskeys coming to us. Um, no one in sight so far to the whiskey boom, so everyone get excited. Um, so one other story that I came across that was kind of cool. For you guys that love uh, Woodford Reserve, we have uh, two new Woodford Reserve Masters Collection Series are hitting the market. Um, so every autumn, uh, Woodford announces the new collection releases. These releases showcase Woodford's innovation while honoring the past industry leaders, Oscar Pepper and James Crow. They also seem to be an excuse for you know the master distillers over there, uh, Jim Morris, to experiment a little bit. So I'm going to show you the first one, uh, which is um, the Woodford Reserve Masters Collection Select American Oak Bourbon. Um, this release uh, was focused on maturation. So the bourbon matures in Ozark Oak, a particular type of um, American oak known for its fast-growing characteristics. 
It is bottled at 45.2% ABV and will become available in the fall of 2018. MSRP, 130 bucks. So I, you, you kind of have to really like Woodford to get into that stuff. So, uh, and then we have the next bottle, which is doesn't look too different. Uh, but this bottle is the Woodford Reserve Masters Collection Oat Grain Kentucky Bourbon. So, as you probably guessed from the name, this bourbon focuses on the grain. For this release, they included oats in the mash bill and reduced the rye content that they normally use. It's a no-age it's a no age statement, straight Kentucky bourbon, and is bottled at 45.2% like the other one. Uh, this one will also be available in the fall and also available for 130 bucks. So... If you guys are really into uh, Woodford Reserve, you know, be on the lookout for that. Um, I tend not to like the uh, the Masters Collection too much, although I must say the batch proof from this year was delicious. I loved it. I have it up there. It was a uh, really good bourbon. It came in second in my uh, in my barrel proof uh, fly fight or my barrel proof uh, mashup, as I called it. Um, and then, um, I guess one other bottle that's, uh, that's being released that you guys might have known about is the new Angels Envy Cast Strength. If you guys haven't seen that bottle, uh, it looks like this. So I'll show you that one. Really cool looking bottle. Comes in a nice, pretty blue, uh, nice, pretty wood case. Um, so starting back in 2012, Angels Envy began releasing yearly limited edition cast strength bourbons. Um, each year, the brand selects specific barrels to be blended and further aged in the in the Portuguese wine cask, port wine casks. Excuse me. This year's expression is available in select markets as of October first. Every hundred barrels or so, we truly find one that stands out, and we're always looking for special barrels to put through our extended finishing process. Says Wes Henderson, co-founder and chief innovation officer at Angels Envy. This comes in at 62% ABV with a suggested retail price of 200 bucks. So that's really, uh, that's really it for the, uh, for the bottle news. Uh, we have some award winners we can go through too, but for right now, I'm going to continue to sip on this, uh, this written house and see what you guys are doing in the chat. Now uh, let's see. I have to catch up here. Uh, let's see. Peter. Well, Hey, Peter White's in the house. How you doing, man? How are you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see. Moose. Everyone's here. Jeff Knapp. Uh, let's see. Stupid price, though. Beautiful bottle. Yeah, it is. Uh, how much? The Dan Trout. Yeah, I know. Dan, Dan's dan been looking for... He wants that Angel's Envy cast strength. I told him I actually had an opportunity to buy it uh, last week on Tuesday. If I knew he was looking for it, I would have picked it up. But I've just never been super, um, super into Angel's Envy. It's... Just a little too sweet for me, so I didn't feel like dropping the price on it. But Santa Cruz and that Angel's Enemy is good stuff. Well, I'm going to have to try before I buy. <laughs> He's rubbing it in your face, yeah. Uh, I have the 2017 Enemy. Still haven't cracked it open yet. Um, Chad Holly, Hey, Jason. Finally made it. Oh, thanks for coming in, Chad. Welcome, buddy. Uh, Welsh Tory is, is uh, Welsh Toro. He's sipping some lovely four square. Wow, that is so Welsh. Correct. That's pretty. Uh, the um, the four square is pretty rare stuff. Or if it's not rare, it's super expensive, right? Is that is that correct? Am I correct in that regard? Mm. I love that written house rye. It's getting more uh, buttery and sugary. It's really really good stuff. Mm. George Kaplan, how you doing, man? He's never had Angel's Envy. Yeah, the uh, the Angel's Envy cast strength is. Uh, yeah, that's one I really want to just try before I uh, before I buy it. Um, it was really one bottle that came in. Somebody else grabbed it after I turned it down. You know, now in hindsight, everyone's talking about it. Maybe I should have gotten it. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, you know, you live and learn. Uh, so let's see. Rittenhouse is always in the bar, Peter White. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, this is awesome stuff. What I'm really doing is kind of priming my palate. So what we're going to do here, guys, is um, if you don't know already, I have uh, a sample that I got from uh, 
from Jeremy over at Sipper Social Club that I won on one of the live streams at Rob at Whiskey in the Six. This is uh, Booker's Rye, um, bottle 5348 2016 LE, 13 years, one month, and 12 days at 68.1%. So this thing will knock your teeth in a little bit. So, um, Numenium heard the AE Rye is good. So that is actually one of the Angel's Envy ones I did like. Uh, the Angel's Envy uh, Rye, but that's actually finished in Caribbean rum casks. So it's actually pretty good. Um, so is the knob uh, barrel strength, or is it like the 25th anniversary edition? The knob barrel strength. Um, not sure what you mean. The knob crank barrel. Oh, is it? Are you talking about this one? I'm talking to Jose Martinez, that one. So it was a knob barrel strength, or was it like the 25th anniversary edition? Um, Eric Wade, I tasted a mini of Angel's Envy and reviewed it, but have not gone back to it. I liked it, but sometimes I have a sweet tooth. Yeah, I think it's really good. You know what, Angel's Envy? I actually use Angel's Envy as, uh, and this is kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but I'm going to be putting out a video about my top uh, five beginner bourbons. And Angel's Envy is actually one of them. I mean, I know it's 50 bucks, but actually my mom, I got into drinking bourbon through Angel's Envy. She tried that for the first time. And I think the sweetness, you know, with the, with that port wine finish actually helped it. And not only did she really enjoy it, but after about a week drinking that, she got, it got too thin for her, too sweet. So then she graduated to um, higher proof bourbon. She's already into Henry McKenna. Um, she actually went out on her own and picked up a bottle of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. So I was a very proud son. Um, if we purchased every bottle that had any type of hype, we would all be broken in debtor's prison. <laughs> That's very true, Lewis. <laughs> it is very true. All right, so we got 24 in the chat. Awesome. Mm. All right, guys. So... I think what we're gonna do is we're, let me see, we have 24 in the chat. Let's see, this will be enough. Uh, uh, trying to think if this will be enough. Oh, Big Dog's in the house. How you doing, Big Dog? Didn't see you in there. How you doing, man? Thanks for coming. Jason Coates, quite an escalation from Angel's Envy to ECBP. <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, there were some other bourbons in between there, Jason. She went from, um, she went from Angel's Envy and then I had her try regular Elijah Craig, which she liked. And then she tried Henry McKenna, which she loves. That's still her favorite bourbon. But she went out and found Elijah Craig Brow Proof. But she still hasn't opened it yet. So I'm really curious to see what she's going to think about that. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Dan. Hit the like button, man. So this will be great. So what we're going to do is... Uh, oh, we got two more in the chat here. We got 26. Hopefully it keeps going up. This is awesome. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give away my first sample of the, um, the Four Roses 130th Anniversary uh, Limited Edition Small Batch Bourbon. Um, I, did that. I did my review on Monday. This stuff is amazing. It's getting better as it opens up a little bit. So I'm giving away two samples tonight, guys, uh, for you. Because, you know, it's, like I said, it's about the bourbon you share, the whiskey you share. It's the people you share it with. So I got two samples for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a, a quick game here called Guess the Bottle. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on your screen, you're going to see an image with a silhouette of a bottle. They're going to do two of these. Uh, the only clue I'm going to give you is the first, the first bottle is going to be a bourbon and the second bottle is a scotch. So the first one I'm going to show you is a bourbon bottle. And if you can get the first one to guess the shape, the bourbon, just based on the shape of the bottle, um, we'll get the sample. So let me know when you guys are ready. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Jason Coates. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, Juan's here. How you doing, Juan? Thanks for coming in. All right. So I'm going to first I'm going to set up the screen here to show you guys. All right. Here we go. All right, guys. So here comes the uh, the first image. So the first one to guess the shape of the bottle. Um, now, remember, this one is a bourbon. Uh, the second one will be a scotch. This one's a bourbon. The first one to guess this will win the, uh, the the first sample of the Four Roses 130th. So here we go. All 
All right, guys. Take a look. Take a look. See. Let me know who knows what that one is. I'm looking in the looking in the chat. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna pour some more rye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Jason Coates. I think he's number one. Let me see. Jason Coates got it. Jason, are you are you right? Are you right? It is Angel's Envy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> you win the Christmas goose. <laughs> and you also win a Four Roses. Uh, you win a Four Roses sample, man. Congrats, buddy. Nice job. Nice job. Everyone, big hand for Jason. So this one is yours, Jason. That's That's got your name on it, buddy. Jason, just uh, send me your uh, send me your email address in the chat. I'll write it down and uh, and I'll also throw in a shirt for you. So I'll I'll email you. I'll send you a shirt and your sample. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jason Coates, he's a Four Roses fanboy. Good, awesome man. All right. So the. Uh, the, the second one, like I said, we'll do a little bit later. That one's going to be a scotch. So for you guys who are a little bit more uh, adverse at scotch, uh, you should get a kick out of this one. This one should be – the next one should be a fun one. That will be for the second sample. So Jason Coates, if you're coming to the Dummies event, you can just bring it with. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm still trying to work that out, Jason. But in the meantime, I'll just send it to you. So just uh, throw me your um, – uh, throw your, your email address in there. So, all right, guys, the time has come. It's time to drink some Booker's Rye. So here is the sample. Let's open this up. Be very, very careful. Whew. I cannot wait. I've been dreaming about trying this stuff for, uh, for ages. So um, here we go. Let's pour it out. Here we go. Booker's Rye. I'm going all in, baby. Full pour. All right, let's, uh, oh yeah, you guys see the White Walker here? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, this is gonna be my review on, um, this will be my next review on Monday. Uh, what's interesting about this bottle is that they say to, well, first freeze it for, I think the bottle changes color, uh, but it actually says to freeze it to serve it cold before you drink it. So I'm gonna do this two ways. I'm going to review it, um, uh, just right out of the bottle, room temp, and then I'm going to go run upstairs and grab a cold version and then review that uh, next to each other and see see how it tastes. So it should be a fun review. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is not a regular blend from Johnny Walker. This is a new blend. So in here is a uh, the blend are single malts from Cardew and Klein Leach, um, Scotland's most northern distilleries. Uh, it is chill filtered, and it says best served cold. Um, so looking forward to checking that one out. All right, so yes, so Welsh Toro, this is the Booker's Rye that I just poured. This is Booker's Rye in this glass right here. Look how dark it is. It is super, super like dark maple, dark maple syrup. All right, guys, going down the nose here. Let's see what we get. Now, I know this has been open before, so I think the alcohol has kind of come out a little bit. So it's not super hot on the nose right now. I know, Jeremy, when you tried it, it was pretty alcohol forward when you first opened it. Um, Eric, wait. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to the Scotch Test Dummies event. So, yeah, I hope to see you there. I'm, I'm uh, trying to work it out with uh, work and, and uh, a dog sitter. <laughs> so. Wow. Woo. Okay, yeah, the alcohol just got me. This is just. Wow, there, there is such deep, dark baking spices on this. Uh. I mean, allspice and cinnamon. I'm getting a, a deep, dark chocolate in this, like a super dark, dark chocolate, almost uh, like uh, like like 85, 90% like co cacao. I don't know how they say it. <laughs> cacao. All right. Mm. 
Wow. This is just so good on the nose. Um, you're, you are getting that that really nice uh, chunk of rye spice on here, but the, the nutmeg and the vanilla and all those baking spices that are kind of going over it, it's, uh, it, it smells a little bit more bourbony on the nose than a rye to me. Wow. I mean, super potent. I mean, you're getting some cloves on here. Definitely a, wow, I just got a really nice um, butterscotch note on this. Bird dog, what kind of dog do you have? I have a uh, black lab. Uh, his name is Boss. <laughs> I actually, um, in January, a friend of mine was moving to New York, uh, coincidentally, because that's where I grew up. I live in Ohio now. Uh, but they were moving to New York, and this dog was um, apparently abused as a pup. So he's very sketchy of strangers and being in loud places. So New York wouldn't have really been a great environment for him. So I, uh, they asked me to take him. I was looking for to adopt a dog. And so he's been mine since January. And he's a, he's a great dog. I love labs. Matt Bailey, uh, how's the legs? Uh, this thing is completely coating the glass. I mean, I don't know if you could tell on the camera, but it's long, it's slow, it's syrupy, it's super, super viscous. Uh, Jeremy, I got a lot of bourbon notes. Uh, it's almost like a high rye bourbon versus a straight rye. Jeremy, I couldn't agree more. This, this definitely tastes, uh, smells, I should say, like a uh, more of a high rye bourbon than a straight rye. The Rittenhouse rye has more of uh, those rye notes on it than this does. Yeah, see the Rittenhouse is where you're getting those 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 peppery, almost minty notes. Where the the uh, Booker's Rye, it's it's coming across more bourbon like, like a high rye bourbon. Definitely agree with you there, Jeremy. Great dog. Once I sat two, yeah, super. Yeah, they are they are great dogs. So, all right, guys, it's time to go in for the Booker's. Cheers. Thanks again to Jeremy Super Social Club. Check them out. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. That is... That is so good. <laughs> and I'm not just saying it. That is... I think it singed my palate a little bit at first. That's it's really hot. Obviously, being um, sixty eight point one percent. Man, I'm gonna go for that second sip and see what notes I could pull out here. My goodness, this is this is vanilla clove, deep, deep dark butterscotch. Dark brown sugar all day. This, yeah, this is not a super high potent rye. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think this was a rye at first. If you gave this to me blind, I probably would think this is more of a. Um, I don't know. This, this, I could maybe think this was a like a like a stag junior or something. It's it's hot and it's really really bourbony. Um. Let's see, Peter White, don't add water to the knob crease cast rank. Yeah, I, I already know that. I did that once, and I did not like it. Um, let's see, uh, probably close to 51% rye, Matt Bailey. Yeah, um, the that's what they they think that the uh, Jim Beam uses a, uh, a rye that's a little bit on the lower scale, uh, more towards in between 51 and maybe 60 to 65, rather than going as a super high rye. Um, this thing is, it's, it's so mouth coating and the, and the finish is just going on forever. And these flavors, I haven't had to take another sip because it's just sitting and lingering. It is so good. This is what I would expect an amazing high priced bourbon or rye to be is exactly this. I mean, it is high priced. This, I mean, it's, it is so rich. Like I said, it's super viscous, and I think that's what's coating uh, the mouth here. It's so good. 
Um, Liquor Hound did a very good review of the Booker's Ride when it was released. Yeah, um, I actually watched that. Yeah, Liquor Hound is really good. Has he done videos lately? I, I don't think I've seen him uh, post new ones. Did he retire? Because I miss his reviews. He always did a great job. Um, let's see here. Mm. Man, I mean, so this is one, and this is what I love about bourbon and, and certain whiskeys, even scotches that I've tried. It, it's evolving over time. You know, some bourbons that you like to sip on, like, you know, the ones, if you guys saw my top go-to videos, you kind of know what you're going to get. You get your bourbon, it's going to pretty much be super consistent. But the bourbons that are the special ones are the ones that evolve. The the Four Roses, uh, uh, one thirtieth that I did, that thing has evolved just opening it for, been open for about a week now. And, but as I was sipping it, when I was doing the review, it kept changing. And this is changing, but it's kind of staying in the same realm of, um, of like kind of the same family of spices. So even though you're getting vanilla, you're getting a nice deep butterscotch, you're getting those baking spices, the cinnamon, the clove, um, the allspice. But it's almost like, like someone like pressed them down, grinded them together and, and almost toasted them to get them super, super flavorful. And then it's put them in this, uh, put them in this, in this glass. And that's what you're sipping on. It's the finish is super long. Now that chocolate note that I was getting on the nose is now showing up on the finish. It's like uh, sipping on like a, like a baked brownie. Oh man, this is delicious. Um, let's see, here we go. I don't think he has anything. I recommend Michter's Toasted Bower Eyes. Speaking of bourbon, I like right. Yeah, Peter White, Dan, uh, Dan Trout gave us a uh, sip of that on a blind uh, taste test and that Michter's Toasted Rye was just delicious. Um, Jason Coates, Liquor Hound shelves made me feel inadequate. <laughs> it's so true. I'm like, damn, like, look at my little shelf. That guy had, I mean, it's like he converted his garage, like the whole garage or the whole room. I thought he was actually at a bar, but it was in his house. It's crazy stuff. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how many, I mean, that guy, maybe he ran out of room. That's why he stopped doing uh, interviews. He just couldn't buy anymore. It was crazy. Um, have you toured any distilleries in Kentucky, Eric Wade? Yeah. Actually, just last month, I did uh, Four Roses. Um, I did Wild Turkey, and I did Buffalo Trace because they're all kind of generally the same area. Uh, they're actually, the same day, it was the day that I went to go wait online for this. Um, that whole day, I was in Kentucky, and I you know, did some, uh, did some tours where the, the Buffalo Trace one was cool because I was actually closed. And when I went, there was a wedding going on. So at first I snuck in and I think I told this story briefly, one of my other live streams, basically I, I snuck in, I wasn't with a tour or anything. I was walking around like I was part of the wedding. I went to like the back where they put the weller and finally a security guard stopped me and was like, uh, uh, Hey buddy, you can't be back here without a tour. I was like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I went into the gift shop to see if I could find anything, and uh, one of the ladies at the front said, hey, we're still doing tours because of the wedding. Do you want me to throw you into the hard hat tour? So we got to do the hard hat tour at Buffalo Trace, which was just phenomenal. I highly recommend it if no one's done it. Um, let's see. Chris Beaton, uh, is this readily available? Uh, Chris, what are you asking about? What's readily, what's readily available? I wish I had a bottle. What are you guys talking about here? It's the... Is it all oh, the Michter's Toasted Bowel Rye? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> um, all right, so what I'm going to do, I have a little bit of Booker's left, the Booker's Rye. This is just amazing, guys. Uh, if you ever get a chance to get a pour of this at a bar or if someone as gracious as Jeremy <laughs> allows you to have a sample of it, um, it's incredible. If I had a whole bottle of this, I don't know if it would last. It's so good. And it's a great bourbon, I would think, for uh, fall and the holidays. There's so many good baking spices in there. It's, it's just delicious. Um, 
Eric Wade, I've been to Jim Beam, Wild Turkey, Bullet, Four Roses, Maker's Mark, and Heaven Hill. Yeah, Heaven Hill was the one I wanted to get to, too, but it was a little bit out of the area of where I was, unfortunately. But when I go back, uh, um, Kentucky's only about two hours from me, so I definitely plan on going back. Uh, so, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compare the Bookers to the Knob Creek cast strength and uh, see how we do. So I've got another fresh class here. Here's your Knob Creek cast strength. For those of you who... Um, so this is 59.8% alcohol stored in warehouse A. Um, the Booker's Rye, again, is 68.1%. Um, so definitely definitely about almost, almost 10 points higher. So let's pour a little bit of this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm thinking I brought some water down here to put into the, uh, the Booker's Rye, but I don't want to. It's too good. <laughs> Let's get some Knob Creek cast strength rye in there. And let's go uh, nose to nose here and see what we get. Let the Well, you know what? The Knob Creek has been open, so it's, it's, it's gotten some air in there. So we should do some nose. So here's my Booker's, and here's my Knob Creek cast strength rye. So let's see what we get. So the Booker's rye is just, has gotten even sweeter on the nose. The alcohol has really kind of come out. Oh my god, it's such a rich vanilla, dark caramel and baking spice nose on it. It is just ridiculous. I'm you are there's I mean there's a hint of rye in there, but the sweet notes on it just completely overpower it. Let's go to the Knob Creek. So you know what? The Knob Creek has more traditional rye notes in this one. Even though it's a lower rye, I could take I could smell the rye a little bit more on this than on this. So you are getting, I'm getting a little bit of those same notes on the Knob Creek cast strength, but they're not nearly as, as forward and potent as they are on the Booker's. Uh, age on the Knob Creek. So uh, the Knob Creek cast strength rye, actually, here, actually, uh, it is, let's see, it's aged for nine years. So... So the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye is nine years. Uh, like I said, bottled at 119, uh, bottled at 119.6, which is 59.8. Um, and as I said, the Booker's Rye is 13 years, one month, and 12 days exactly. So that's your, uh, those are your ages. Let's see. Woo. Oh, man. I took too big of a nose on the Booker's. Yeah, the alcohol's still there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, Monica Wiltz is here. How you doing? Nice to see you, Monica. Thanks for coming. Glad you're here. Uh, Monica Wiltz, I'm late to the party. What Booker's is it? It is Booker's Rye. Um, like I just mentioned, it is uh, bottle 5348 from 2016. 13 years, one month, and 12 days. And I'm comparing it to Knob Creek uh, Cast Strength Rye, which is 9 years, bottled at 119.6. Yeah, the noses are the noses are completely different. You know, I I did hear uh, that this was supposed to be the closest thing to Booker's Rye in the market right now without drinking Booker's Rye, but maybe on the nose that might be true. It's it's pretty close, but it's not. The Booker's Rye is just ridiculous on the nose. I mean, it is like a it's like a candy store coming out of this. The vanilla and the oak. The Knob Creek rye has definitely a more rye spice to it, but with those sweet notes behind it, but it's not nearly as potent as it is here. So I'm going to take a sip of the Knob Creek rye here. Actually, you know what? Let me take a sip of water because the Booker's is literally still kind of coating my mouth here. Mm. All right, here we go. Cheers. Yeah, you know what? The Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye. You could tell it's definitely the same flavor profile. It's not a high rye. It's definitely sweeter than spicy, which is what you normally get on a rye. Like the Rittenhouse just smells completely different. This is the Rittenhouse here. This is a more traditional rye. Um, 
this one, the Knob Creek, it's definitely sweet. Um, it's definitely on the sweeter side, but there's a little bit more rye and spice kick to that, whereas the Booker's is just so concentrated and just the flavors in this are just punching you in the face. It's amazing. Oh, wow. And you know what the, the crazy thing is, is that the Booker's Rye doesn't really taste like, you know, a regular Booker's bourbon. Even though I did say this is more bourbon-like, it doesn't taste anything like Booker's, like a regular Booker's bottle. This is in a league of its own. The flavors on this are just intense and insane. It's so good. Um... Let's see what do we got going on. Actually, I do have a bottle of rye, and it's an interesting one. It's the old Potrero single malt. I'm going to pour one. Yeah, definitely Welsh. Have some rye with me, buddy. Um, that stuff looks really interesting. Well, I would assume they would be a little different since they're both bean products. Um, yeah. So that was the reason, Chris, why I wanted to kind of do this head-to-head, -head, um, especially once somebody said that, oh, it's Knob Creek Cast Ranks, the closest thing you're going to get to the Booker's Rye without drinking it. Um I mean, that may be true for some, but to me, they're pretty far apart. The Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye is delicious. It's really good. It's gotten sweeter as it's opened up. Um, it's definitely a lower rye, just like I think the Booker's is. But the Booker's is just so heavily concentrated. It is so, so good. I mean, it's like, oh, man. And it just keeps evolving. This I know what I'm getting with the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye. This, it's definitely gotten sweeter, but those flavors are kind of remaining. This Booker's Rye, it's evolving as I let it sit here. And I don't have much left, sadly. But now that I'm sipping on it, now it's like a caramel-coated um, baked brownie. It's ridiculous. It's amazing. Um... Let's see, uh, Scott, what do you got here? Scott, I'm drinking the Kentucky Owl Rye uh, Batch 1. Oh, good on you, Scotty. Scott has been uh, talking about that one, so I hope you're enjoying it, man. Uh, Matt Bailey, I highly recommend Pikesville. Yes, Matt, I have Pikesville up there. I love Pikesville. If I'm not drinking Rittenhouse, I am drinking Pikesville. I love Pikesville Rye. It's delicious. Um... <laughs> Chris Beaton, that wasn't meant to be. Oh no, no, no worries, Chris. I don't. No worries. I didn't. I didn't think you were anyway. I, I, I'm just. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go through the comparison there. Um, Monica Willis, where can you get Booker's Rye, or can you? Uh, Monica, it's not available in stores anymore. It's. Uh, it came out in two six, 2016. It was the only one released. Um, I mean, you can get it on secondary. Uh, I think, Jeremy, I think you got it in an auction. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You won it in an auction or you won a chance to buy it, which you did. Um, so it's not available in stores. Um, this was laid down by Booker No himself. I think this was the last bottle he put down in 2003 um, in Kentucky. He was the master distiller from 1960 to 1992. Um, this was a small batch experiment. So Booker's Rye aged in Rackhouse's D and E, um, uh, both which see sun exposure throughout the day. So that was a big thing that Booker wanted to do. He wanted this barrels where he put this rye to get sun exposure, really get those flavors. Um, it's labeled big time batch. It's uncut, unfiltered, 68.1. And as I mentioned, 13 years, one month, and 12 days exactly. Um... Matt Bailey, 900 secondary. Yep, that sounds about right. Booker's Rise, about 900 secondary. That's where I've seen it for. Jeremy, he won it at a raffle. Yeah, cool, man. That's what I thought. Uh, yeah, he won the chance to win it at a raffle and he got it. So, lucky guy. Around 700 secondary. Wow, 700 seems like a steal from 900. <laughs> so, so, yeah, if you guys have a chance to get this, uh, the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye, if you're into lower rye, um, rye whiskeys, uh, you know, it's, it's delicious. It's really good. I can't complain. It's really good. It's just you can't compare it. To, the Booker's Rye is just ridiculous. It's so good. And again, thank you, Jeremy. I know I keep thanking you, but it's just so good. 
Oh, my God. So awesome. All right, guys. So we're going to talk about a couple of awards that were given out. Uh, see what you guys think. And then um, then we're going to go to our second uh, giveaway for the Four Roses 130th anniversary. So, uh, so Whiskey Advocate uh, just released their Fall 2018 award winners. Uh, basically, they picked their favorite uh, high-proof whiskeys. So if you guys haven't heard the, uh, the news, I'll show you um, I'll show you the three bottles that they chose and the three bottles that they chose as their winners. They chose three different bottles for their fall 2018 award winners and they are these. So let me know in the chat if you uh, if you uh, have these or if you've tried these. I have two of these bottles. The Ardbeg Core Vieken is uh, is my next one. That's the one I am looking to get to try for my next Ardbeg because I love the ten. So those were the three that they had chose. Uh, Ardbeg Core Vieken. They put it at ninety five points. That's about ninety bucks. The Booker's Backyard Barbecue ninety three points, and Nika from the Barrel at ninety one. So that's uh, yeah. So that's the those are the three that they picked. Jeremy, he agrees with the Corey pick. Yeah, I can't wait to... I'm picking that one up uh, this week, uh, Jeremy. I'm going to review that one. I cannot wait. I've been sipping on the Ardbeg 10, and I absolutely love it. It's so good. Um, and our favorite whiskey connoisseur in the world, <laughs> um, Jim Murray, he has released his 2019 Whiskey of the Year, and uh, he named it the 2017 William LaRue Weller, of course. So... This is the second year in a row that Buffalo Trace won um, Whiskey of the Year. The Colonel Taylor Four Grain won last year. Um, obviously, it's part of the Antique Collection. If it wasn't bad enough to try to get anything from the Antique Collection now, especially from, uh, from 2017, it's going to be even more impossible to get it uh, you know, <laughs> this year. So thanks, Jim Murray. Appreciate it. Um, he also named his second finest whiskey in the world. He named it the Glen Grant 18-year uh, uh, scotch. And the third finest whiskey in the world he named was the Thomas Handy Sazerac 127.2, also part of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. So those are his top three. So just kind of wanted to call those out in case you guys hadn't heard. Pretty interesting. Some people really like Jim Murray, what he does. Um... Uh, but it seems he has a really good following. Whatever he names, it really kind of takes off. So uh, so let's see here. What do we got going on? Almost bought a Nika from the bottle yesterday. Passed it up. 75 was too much. Yeah, Chad, if you can get it for cheaper, that's not worth 75 I think uh, you can get it for about, I think it's about 50 bucks American. That's what it should be. 75 is a little bit much. Even though it's delicious, I have a bottle. I reviewed it. I have a video of it. If you haven't seen it, checked it out. My review for Nika. It was really good. Um, Scott, he's paid by Buffalo Trace. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that. I've heard that um, that he's been maybe that something's a little bit going on, on the side with him. But you know, I'm I'm not going to say anything. Who knows? Um, let's see. Uh, and Glenn Grant. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So everyone unanimously is saying that <laughs> Jim Murray is paid off in some way, shape, or form. Nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm very sadly have a little bit of Booker's left. Mm. I'm going to save one more sip for when we sign off, guys. Mm. So good. So with that, it's time for our second giveaway of the Four Roses 130th Anniversary Limited Edition Small Batch Bourbon. That's a mouthful. Um, if you haven't checked out my review, I did a review, uh, I recently released it on Monday. It's one of those bourbons that it was actually more alcohol forward when I first tasted it, uh, which was surprising. Uh, I've had other Four Roses Limited Editions in the past and they weren't so, um, they didn't hit you as hard as this one did. But as it opened up, it's one of those bourbons like the Booker's Rye that I was talking about that just keeps evolving as you sip on it. You get different notes, different flavors. It goes from spicy to sweet. And then it all just kind of comes together. It's, it's a really, really well done bourbon. Kudos to Four Roses and uh, Master Distiller Brent Elliott. It's, uh, it's, a great, it's a great bourbon. 
So, uh, let's see. George Kaplan, I thought Jim Murray's top pick would be White Walker. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if I compare to Jim uh, Jim Murray, but uh, we'll see if it becomes my whiskey of the year for 2018. <laughs> Jim Murray, I'm not sure. Uh, Matt Bailey, it's a unique booker. is very good, in my opinion, like the Kentucky Chew, the best this year. Um, yeah, the Kentucky Chew is really good. Um, all three bookers this year have been phenomenal. I still, when I did my uh, comparison, uh, one of my live streams, when I did the live review of K Kentucky Chew, I still like Kathleen's batch uh, the best just because it was very unique to me, but Kentucky Chew is delicious. Kentucky Chew to me tasted like um, like uh, waffles with maple syrup on them. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, 27 watching. Yeah, it's awesome. We hit 30 before. That was my highest I've ever gotten. So thank you guys so much. And because of you and, you know, I love to... You know, my mantra of uh, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. You know, I really do believe that. I love sharing whiskey with people, which is why I like to do sample giveaways and give you guys a shot to try different things. You know, it's like Jeremy was so gracious to share his bookers. I want to share, you know, the Four Roses 130th with you guys because, you know, it's not everyone can get their hands on, you know, sometimes stuff like this. They're not lucky enough. They're, they, they live far away. You know, people grab them and they put on the secondary for hundreds of dollars. You know, if I have this stuff, I want to share it. So, um, so here we go, guys. So the second giveaway, like I mentioned, so the first one we had Angels Envy, um, won by Jason Coates. Jason, if you uh, put your if you put your uh, email in the chat, I didn't I didn't I didn't see it. So put it in there again if you're still here. Um, so the second uh, bottle is going to be a Scotch. So. I'm going to show you the same thing, a silhouette of a scotch bottle. And the first one to yell it out will get a sample. We'll get a one-ounce sample of the Four Roses 130th. So let me get this set up before we get started here, guys. All right. We are ready. So all right. Everyone get set. Everyone ready? Get set. <laughs> Jason Coates, we'll do after the next bit. Oh, okay, Jason wants to win a second sample. <laughs> Jason, you're out of the running, buddy. All right, here we go, guys. So here is the bottle of scotch for the sample, and here we go. All right, I'm just waiting on you guys, so just going to wait to see who who comes up here. Here we go. Uh, let's see who got it. Uh, George Kaplan, old Putney. There you go, buddy. You got it. George Kaplan, nice job. It is the old Putney, and um, here it is. It is old Putney. Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, you guys, some <laughs> some guys. Uh, it's 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 hard to tell when you when you feel a a, a contest coming on. You got to get your you got your fingers ready. And I find it equally harder when you when you try to uh, when you're trying to do it either on a phone or something like that. So so George Kaplan, nice job. Uh, Jeremy, you were close. You were second, man. But Jeremy, uh, I already talked to you about. It. I'm gonna. I'm sending you a sample anyway for you giving up your bookers. So I appreciate that. So you're getting a sample. You and Rob, I'll be sending one anyway uh, to uh, Canada for you guys. So don't worry about it. Um. So let's see. So George Kaplan, you got it first. Uh, yep. So George, put your. Uh, Big congrats to George Kaplan. Throw your email in the uh, in the chat, George, so I can uh, contact you, and I'll also send you a shirt along with your sample, and uh, it should be fun. So it'll be great. All right, so I just need uh, emails from Jason Coates and from George. Once you guys put it in there, uh, congratulations to them. Uh, it's a lot of fun, man. Good stuff. So just to go over some uh, some of my next uh, reviews, I'm going to be doing. As I already mentioned, 
I'm going to be doing the White Walker. Uh, will be my Monday, uh, my Monday review. That's going to be coming. Actually, no wait. It's it's uh, today's Wednesday. What am I talking about? Uh, look for this on Friday. Friday, uh, this Friday will be White Walker, and um, and then next week on Monday, I'm finally beginning to this Jim Beam uh, repeal batch. So I'll be doing that one next uh, on Monday, which I uh, heard really great things about. Um, also in the pipeline to review, I have a Rubby L 10-year single barrel. I have the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, where is it? Uh, the Smooth Ambler Contradiction, which is, let me move my head. Smooth Ambler Contradiction, which is right there. And then right next to it is uh, the Buck, uh, the Buck 8, which I picked up for about 30 bucks. Going to try that. Um, Peter White, uh, we'll have to work something out so you can do a head to head with the four roses, one twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually planning on doing that too. Um, Peter, uh, if I can get my hands on a one twenty fifth anniversary, uh, sample, we'll love to do a head to head with that. Um, let's see. Oh, the repeal is good from Matt Bailey. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of great things about the repeal back, so it should be pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think what other reviews I have coming up guys. Um, I've kind of picked up so much stuff. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, the, the Yellow Rose uh, Corn Whiskey. Uh, I have a couple. I have a Breckenridge I want to do. I have a lot of stuff lined up here. Uh, New Riff is releasing uh, another batch of single barrel, barrel proof bourbons um, the week of October 22nd. So, uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll be heading down there to, uh, to get a bottle of that. Um, so a lot of stuff on the in the pipeline. So it should be great. Um, let's see. Questions. Anyone had ECBP C119? Just got one this week. Matt. Um, yeah, I picked one up too. So just so you guys know, the my next uh, live stream next week, I'm taking the all the uh, Elijah Craig barrel proofs from this year, the A, the B, and the C, and we're gonna do a uh, a blind taste test of all of them and see which one comes out uh, on top as the best one. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, uh, Peter White, Ruby L10 SB is great. Uh, Numenium B518 is great. Matt Bailey. Yeah, Matt, that's, oh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, Matt, you're like in my head right now. I do have a Boone County. Um, I have the uh, 10 year and the 12 year. So I'm going to be do re uh, reviewing both in the same uh, review to see how they each are. So I'm going to be doing the 10 and the 12 for the Boone County. So I'm looking forward to that. I heard great things about Boone County. As well. Um, new many I'm heard. Uh, oh, Moose. The new riff sample I won last live was good. Moose, right? How good is that stuff? It's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's a really good bourbon. It's getting just sweeter over time. So, so let's see, guys. I have, what do I have left? I'm going to continue to sip on my Knob Creek here a little bit. Mm. So good. Dan Trout, Boone County is good. Um, actually, before we sign off here, has anyone in the chat had the Parker's Heritage, the new one that they just released, finished in the orange Curacao, uh, the orange Curacao barrels or the finished with orange Curacao? Has anyone had that one? Uh, Matt Bailey, I could send you a single barrel sample of Boone County. Yeah, Matt, I would love that because... Um, I heard the single barrels are even better than the regular bourbon. So, yeah, if you have a sample of it, I'll definitely trade a sample of something with you if you want. So that would be great. Uh, Moose, flavor on flavor. Yeah, New Riff. The, it's, it's, it's amazing that New Riff, for a four-year bourbon, how, how much flavor is in there. I mean, I think being non-chill filtered definitely helps it, but it's really good stuff. Uh, Jim Shannon, yes. Uh, you've had the... Um, I'm assuming yes means you've had the uh, Parker's Orange Curacao. Uh, how was it? I'm just curious. I have an opportunity to maybe buy one, and I just want to know if it's worth it or not. Hey, Whiskey Throttle just joined. Hey, oops, I'm late. It's okay, man. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. Uh, I'm probably going to be signing off here in the next, uh, next five to ten minutes, but thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been a fun show. 
Um, let's see. Best park as I've had is the 10-year cognac finish from Jeremy. That's good to know, Jeremy. I definitely trust her opinion. I'm going to see if I could get my hands on that one. Um, yeah, Whiskey Throttle's in the house. If, uh, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, go check out Whiskey Throttle. He does some great stuff, great lives, great views, good stuff. Um, Monica Willits, buy the Sagamore cast strength. Yes, Monica, you, you mentioned that last week. And uh, next time I take a ride to... Monica, is that available in Kentucky? Because if I go there, I'm going to I'm gonna look for it. And uh, I hope I like it, because if not, I'm, I'm coming after you. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Peter White, I know where you can get the Parker's Heritage 4 for 1300 Oh, my God. That's crazy. Mm. All right, guys. I think... Uh, Oh, wait, Whiskey Throttle. He just woke up. All right. <laughs> Matt Bailey, the Parkers will be polarizing. Some hate it, some love it. And Matt, that's uh, that's generally what I've heard, that the Parkers Heritage stuff, some people can't stand it. and uh, But some people that love it, I mean, they swear by the stuff. So it's pretty good. Monica Willis, if it's in Indiana, I bet it is. Okay, I'm close to Indiana, so I'll go to Indiana and grab it. Um, I'll definitely look for it. I'm trying to get my hands on the uh, the Iron Root, um, the Iron Root whiskey out of uh, uh, out of Texas. So I'm trying to get my hands on that. Oh, here's a here's a bottle I recently scored to show you guys. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but I'll show you. Uh, this guy, Elmer T. Lee. I finally added him to my family. So um, finally got a bottle of this. I didn't have to pay too much for it. It was awesome. It was only 60 bucks. Uh, so finally got me a bottle of Elmer T. Lee. So I'm probably going to do a review of that one too. Uh, Matt Bailey, it's in Kentucky too. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see. So I think uh, I think that about wraps it up, guys. I hope you had a really fun show. I did. Um, just a reminder, George Kaplan, Jason Coates, if you're in the uh, chat still, please send me your email address. Uh, if you if you're out of the chat, um, uh, definitely shoot me a message on one of my videos so I can uh, get you guys your samples of the uh, four roses. Uh, yeah, should be fun, and I'll send you a T-shirt to boot. Um, so that should be great. So I'm gonna take my tiny tiny bit of uh, bookers that I have left, and I'm gonna enjoy every last drop of it. So. Um, what I do want to say is uh, thanks again for everybody dropping in. Thanks for joining me on the in the chat. I've had a nice group tonight. It was a lot of fun. Uh, join me next week. Uh, we're going to be doing all three of this year's Elijah Craig Bow Proofs head to head. So I'm going to need to drink a lot of water that night. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, like I said, guys, thanks for coming in. And uh, like I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, everyone. And uh, I will see you next week. Take care, everyone. Cheers.